Okay, TP Production Guy back here again today with another Final Cut Pro basic lesson. Today we're going to be talking about some uh, more just basic effects and using the motion tab. So let's begin. We're going to come down here and open up Final Cut Pro. Um, I already have some shots laid out for us. And I have the effects bin already open. We're going to talk about just regular video transitions going from one video shot to the next video shot. In my last lesson, we talked about the basic dissolves. So let's talk about some more just basic transitions. We're going to open up the video transitions bin, and we'll come to the first bin, 3D simulation. Let's use the cross zoom. I'm going to take the cross zoom and put it on the cut between the ghost ship sign and the guy popping out. And let's watch. I'm going to turn off the audio to the computer so we don't hear it. It goes in and pops out for the next shot. Now, just like the audio, just like the uh, dissolve earlier, the video dissolve in the last lesson, we can click on this, we can right click, and we can change the duration. Let's change it to 20 frames instead of a second. So it was a little bit quicker couple other things we can change. We can pop this open and we can change, we can put a little blur to it as it's coming in it can get more blurry than it already was. We can change how much it's zooming in. We want it, I like to have it zoom all the way in. We can also change where it is zooming into in the shot. So if you wanted to, to zoom into somebody's face you could have it zoom or you could have it zoom up into the right corner. So now when it's zoomed it's zoomed to the right corner and then out of the right corner. We're going to click on that effect and to get rid of that we can just delete it right off. There's a couple other in this bin, you know, cube spin. You can put it on there and it'll give you a cube spin. You can change the duration, change which way it's coming from, starting on, end on, just like the dissolves. We can double click this, open it up in this little preview window, and we can mess with how this how the cube spins. We can have it be a cube spin down. And all of these transitions up in here will have different little things like that that you can manipulate. So it's gonna be your job to go in and mess with those different effects and how to how to use them. Um, now back in dissolve where we where I showed you in our last lesson, the cross dissolve. Let's use another one. Let's use Dip to Color. And what Dip to Color Dissolve does is we'll put this between the two shots. This one will dip to black for you. But you know what? I don't like dipping to black. Maybe I like dipping to white. So I can double click on the, on the effect, come up into my preview window, and I'll click right here on the color, the black. And I'm going to change this to white. Now it's going to dip to a white color before it goes to the next shot. Now, you know, you could do any color you want. Let's say I wanted to do a red. I'll do a red. Dips to red, and then the shot comes up. Now, you know, I could change this duration. I can make it longer. I can make it two seconds. Okay, we'll delete that one also. We'll click on it and hit delete. And just some other ones I want to show you. Here's like a page peel. You can come to page peel, put it right on here, and it'll make it like the first shot peels off of the second shot. And again, you can change the you can double click and open this up. You can change the duration if you want. Let's right click it, go to duration. We'll change it to 20 frames instead of one second. Just go a little bit quicker. And when we double on, double click on this and open it up in the preview. We can even see, if we put park it right in the middle, we can see we'll change the direction that the paper pulls up. Pulls up. So maybe I want it to roll up from bottom to top. I'll put it at zero, and now it'll roll from the bottom to the top. We can also change the radius, so how much the where the loop of the thing is and how much it loops up, how high it goes up when it loops, how steep it is. See, it goes up a lot quicker there. We can also highlight the loop area, so we can move this this highlight one. 
it just gives it a little bit more of a highlight to the to the actual loop area if you took this off you see it's just the same video color all right we'll delete that one off uh, wipes are always good um, you can mess with all these wipes the most basic wipe would just be a uh, would just be an edge wipe we'll come right here put the edge wipe on we'll watch this as it wipes to the other one from one shot to the other we can double click on this we can change the angle that it comes from so if you wanted to instead of going left to right we can have it come right to left bring it to 90 degrees and you might say oh well, that's pretty slow well we could go right click go to duration 15 frames and now watch it back it goes a lot quicker all right let's delete that one off so that that'll be your next task is to go in through these video transitions and use any video you have and use your shots and see how they transition transition together change the duration change the direction you're coming from whether it's start on edits or end on edits remember a start on edit will be from this shot starting on and going over top of this shot if i put it here if i put an effect here and it's an end on edit it's going to have this shot overlap the very end of the this first shot now let's go into a little bit something something else that uh, that final cut has with this shot of this guy popping out maybe he comes up to his face and i wanted to zoom into his face a little bit i can double click on my actual clip and this clip now has loaded up into the preview window and i have a tab here that's called the motion tab let's click on that now what the motion tab does is it changes stuff just within this actual clip on the timeline not in the raw and not on any other clips on the timeline. It's just this one clip. So as you can see, I can zoom this shot in. I could change the rotation of it. I could move this shot to the left or to the right instead of having it centered. You can see now these numbers have changed in the center point. And I'll say I want to reset all those. I can come up here to this red X. It'll reset these all back, size to 100, rotation to zero, center, center to zero. The other thing I can do within the motion tab that's important is crop. So I can come in here, say I wanted to crop this guy's face down to here. I could crop in the right, crop in the top, and crop in the left. And now I just have his head right here. We can come. That's really very good for when you have pictures. And I'll pull in a picture and we'll, we'll do an example of that. But let's for right now hit the red X so we can assign that back to all zeros. Um, that's really the one you're going to want to use for this right now out of the motion chat. Let's first bring in a picture to work so I can show you a little bit more what the motion tab is. I'm going to put my cursor here at the end of our timeline. I'm going to come back into our bin and I'm going to go file, import, files. And I'm going to get something off my desktop. I have a photo on there that we can use. Click on this. We're going to open this up. I'm going to open this, double click, open this photo up in the preview. I'll just set it in and set it out somewhere. I'll do grab it and I'll do an overwrite edit. And now here's this shot down here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. But what I want you to show you is how to use the motion tab effectively. So let's double click on our clip on the timeline, our picture, and we'll come up into the motion tab. So now you see here again, we can zoom in and out. We can rotate the picture. And we can you know, maneuver it where we want it on the screen. Let's hit the red X to reset these. Let's come back to the beginning of this shot. This actually has to come down smaller a little bit. To actually fit on the screen it's gonna probably be right about, it's probably gonna be about 13 we're gonna put now uh, maybe it's 15 we'll put it 18 that's it that looks about right so what I want to do is I'm gonna set a keyframe for the beginning of the picture and I'm also gonna set a keyframe for the scale and one for the center and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here to the end 
of the shot. You see how you get to the end? And I'm going to set another keyframe for the scale and one for the center. Now I'm going to zoom out on these so you can see both of my keyframes up here. I can use these little arrows next to the keyframe maker and go to the previous keyframe. Then I can hit this right one lights up. I can go back to the other one. What I want to do is I want to have the picture start out wide and then zoom into the can on the green screen. So I'll come back to the beginning. That one is stable. I have both my keyframes set. So I'm going to come to the end. I already have my keyframe set. Now I'm going to move them to where I want it. I'm going to zoom in. And now I'm going to select the picture and move down. And now I'm seeing how close we are. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And we'll put it like right there. So let's watch this back from the beginning. And you can see we've created a zoom in on this product. We've changed the scaling and the where it is on the screen to, to do this. Another important thing is let me reset these parameters. I'm going to hit the red X. Everything goes back. I'll put this to 18 so we can see it. Another thing I want you to do is when I click on this clip on the timeline, you can see this X comes up. So I want to make sure you guys have that set up properly. If you don't have that up, you can click on this little box right here in your time on your uh, source window. You might have just image up. So you see when I'm highlighted, there's no X. If I click this and I have image wireframe up, then I have this X to move this around on the screen. I'm going to hit this red X up in this button just to reset that. I'll put the scaling back to 18 so we can see the shot. So let's let's use what we just learned in this shot here. I'm going to zoom in more to his face as the shot comes. So I'm going to oh, double click on the clip in the timeline, open it up here in this preview window. I've already got the motion tab open. And I'll come, you can see I'll, I come off it, the X is gone. I know I'm on the shot because here's the X. I set my keyframe for scale and a keyframe for center. Now I'm going to scroll down to where the shot ends. And you can see here I'm on the other shot. Now I'm back. I see the X. So I know that's the last frame of this shot. And I'm going to set a, a scale keyframe and a center keyframe. I'll come down here, grab this wheel, and zoom it out so I, we can see both of them. I'll use my keyframe assist buttons to go back to the previous keyframe. And this one I think I want to keep the way it is. So I'm going to go to the, the next keyframe, which is the last frame of it. And I'm going to scale into this guy's face. And as I scale in, you see it's going over into the center. So I'm going to grab and pull. And it's changing the center numbers here. Because I want to zoom into his face as this shot goes. Now let's go back and see how this looked. OK. So now you can go and you can put some shots together. Any shots you go shoot, go put them together down the timeline. Work with your basic transitions, whether it be peels or dip, dip to color, dip to white, dip to red. And then also use your clips and manipulate them using the rotation, using the scale, using the center, and uh, you know using the crop if you ever needed to crop anything. All right, this is TV Production Guy signing off.